Man one here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM. We're out here on location here at the Larimar Recreation Reserve here, of course, here on, on a Thursday night. And, of course, uh, let's uh, turn our attention out to cycling because we're heading not too, well, a little bit further um, south of here because we're heading to Coburg and, of course, uh, speak with the Coburg Cycling Club. And, of course, we've got a very special guest on the show. Of course, she's not just a cyclist, but she's also a community member and she just reviewed to me uh, before she... We came on that. She's also the vice president of the Coburg Cycling Club. Her name's Corinne. She joins us right now. Thanks, Corinne, for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. No worries. Well, tell us a bit about the year, um, I guess, since we've returned back from lockdown. Yeah, so it's actually been pretty busy, which is amazing. I think we're lucky with um, cycling. It's one of the sports that we can participate in without um, too much COVID risk. And so we've kind of gotten back on board with our criterium. So our Saturday crits up at Campbellfield have been happening um, since late Jan. We've got a couple more of those. And then um, we start into our road season through the winter. So we've got the Northern Combine races Um, which are some of the longer road races. So that's been really exciting. And we've also had our track program start up with our Wednesday night track training um, and all the crew who do that. And full disclosure, I don't actually do much of the track stuff. I mostly do the road stuff, but it's been great to see everyone getting back out on the track again. How has it been like to get back to some sort of normality in regards to training and all that sort of thing since the lockdown? Obviously, as you mentioned that cycling wasn't affected so much because obviously people can get on the bike and do their exercise, um, whatever that was uh, at the time, but how good is to get back on the track? Yeah, look, I don't think you can overstate how good it is to get back on um, a bike outside. All of us who were kind of stuck on the indoor trainers or didn't have them um, all through last year's lockdowns. I mean, it was struggle town, you know, like it was really, really hard to kind of just get on your bike and in the same little room and do the same thing every day. And um, as soon as we were able to kind of ride more than five kilometres from our homes, everyone was out there and, and getting amongst it. And, it and, and you can feel the joy, you know, people are so excited. Everyone's really, really excited about racing again as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been an absolute game changer to be able to go outside and, um, and put in some hours. Cause that was also, I mean, it wasn't so much the five kilometre radius because you might've heard about some people were doing a thing called a burbsing where you ride every street um, in your five kilometre radius. Um, so that was all right. But then once we had our two hour limit, that was really difficult because most of us are used to going out on kind of, you know, five, six, seven hour training rides. And um, it was very limiting to only have two hours outside. What's the focus now for the club um, for the rest of this year? Yeah, so we've got um, our, well, yeah, we've got the criteriums on at the moment and we've only got a couple more of those. And then um, we'll move on to uh, the Jack Wood Memorial Race, which is a handicap race we have. Um, and that's, uh, we're looking, we haven't actually locked in a date yet, but it'll probably be late April or sometime in May. And um, we work with a number of other clubs, mostly in the kind of northern um, suburbs as part of the Northern Combine. So we have a whole bunch of racing through the winter time. It's fairly regular. Um, that we share with, say, Brunswick Cycle Club, Hawthorne, Melbourne Uni, um, Sunbury, Preston, there's a few other clubs that get involved. And um, so that'll be kind of our next thing, as well as a few of our members um, looking at the kind of um, state-level racing. Um, Obviously, we've had a bit of a change because now we've got Oz Cycling as our peak body, Mm. um, which is sort of a shift away from the model we had previously. Um, But we've still got some great state-level racing and and in... um, Coming up this weekend, um, we've got the Tour of Mansfield, which I'm competing in and I'm super excited about. So that's a three-stage race up at Mansfield um, and it'll be so good to get out and do that again. How's the preparations like heading to that uh, in Mansfield? Of course, I've actually driven to Mansfield myself, so I know the, uh, the terrain that he's going to be facing uh, driven <laughs> up uh, to Mansfield myself. Um, how's the preparations like? Yeah, I think it's probably been um, pretty different for, for everyone to get ready for it this year. Um, I mean, luckily we, we've, we've got King Lake and the Dandenongs and a few hills closer to home that we can um, get up um, for, to practice. Um, 
but it is a bit different because usually we would have had um, yeah, a different year last year. We would have um, been doing a lot more racing last year. So I think the thing that's really unknown for a lot of us is what our race form is going to be like because we actually haven't had all that much um, long racing this year. Like I said, we've had the short races like the Criteriums and track for people that do that, but we haven't had a lot of those kind of longer courses or any stage races Um so, so that'll be interesting to see how we go over a couple of days and over a few stages and, you know, whether we've all still kind of got the form that we need to get up Buller on the last stage. For you, how did you get involved in cycling and why did you choose it? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I um, was never a particularly sporty kid like I, I, I play music so I was like one of the the music kids rather than one of the sport kids but I always rode my bike to get to school you know that was always um something that I did and um and continued that into adulthood just always I love cycling as a mode of transport and um then I was uh, I had a period of time where I was living in North Fitzroy but I was working in Sunshine and I just decided to ride my bike to and from North Fitzroy in Sunshine every day so I was doing, I don't know, about 50 Ks, a bit over 50 Ks a day. And I loved it. Like I was still just loving riding those kinds of distances. And then a friend, a couple of friends of mine got into kind of um, riding longer rides and, and competing in events and things like that. And they sort of encouraged me to give it a go. And, um, and I think one of the things that was really refreshing for me as coming to the sport kind of more as an adult was I'd never really been a sporty competitive person. And suddenly I'd found this sport that I could actually be moderately good at because I have terrible hand-eye coordination. So um, I can't do ball sports really, but I can do cycling. I can, I can pedal away. So that's kind of how, um, how I came to it. And um, I think, you know, it's interesting. A lot of women probably do come to cycling later. You know, it's not, it's not, um, well, it's different now, I suppose, is we've got more women coming up in the junior ranks, but it hasn't traditionally been kind of, um, the same for for women and a lot of us would come to it in our 30s or 40s or 50s you know and that's that's actually one of the beautiful things about our sport you can enter at any time just a couple of questions before we let you go um firstly what does the sport of cycling mean to you and especially being there at Coburg Cycling Club yeah, well, I think I just sort of um, alluded to it a little bit. I, the, the biggest thing is the community. It's it's a really, really beautiful, supportive community, um, which I'm sure you see in lots of sporting communities. People really um, encourage each other and, and um, it's not kind of so much about winning or losing or and obviously it's competitive, but um, but it's also just about supporting each other and having fun and um, and that's, I think one of the best things about it, you know, and, and it's also a sport that you can do on your own. You can go out on a long ride on your own, um, on a long training ride, or when you're competing, you, you're kind of doing it as an individual, but you've still got a club behind you and you've always got friends on the sideline shouting out your name and offering you encouragement um, when you're <laughs> deep in the pain cave. <laughs> uh, now, do you have any advice to people out there that should get involved in cycling, especially down there at Coburg? Um, just give it a go. Like, you know, it, um, don't feel like you're going to be the slowest one, you know, because that, that's not what it's about. You'll always have a friend who'll kind of sit up and ride with you regardless of whether you're a fast person or a slow person. So that'd be my first piece of advice. And the second piece of advice is if you're looking, um, to get a bike, um, make sure you try them out and, and, you know, bikes are not cheap. I know that, but don't get the cheapest one you can find because you won't have a good time. And so you got to get a bike that you get, that you like riding. And that's the best way to kind of keep doing it is if you've got something that is fun and you enjoy doing, you'll keep doing it. But if you've got a bike that's a, just, you know, a clunker, you're not going to get on it and go for a ride. And we'll finish up with this one last one, which is do you have any future ambitions in the sport of cycling and any highlights throughout your time in, in cycling? Yeah, sure. Um, so probably my, um, my biggest highlight, I'll start with the highlight because that kind of then brings me to my future ambitions. My biggest highlight was the first year that I rode the Tour of Bright, which is a, another stage race um, out of Bright. And the last stage, the third stage was up um, Mount Hotham. And I, I, I was done, like I'd already done two days of racing and I was so tired and I just thought I'm just going to get up this hill and, and see what I can do. And um, we hit Hotham and a couple of riders just went straight off. And then um, on the first steep bit, I suddenly realised that I dropped the rest of the bunch. 
and then I caught the next rider on the road. And I, whilst I didn't catch the first rider on the road, I did come second, which I wasn't expecting to, and it then put me in third overall for the whole race. And um, and I was so pleased because I just hadn't expected that kind of a result. And I remember crossing the finish line and there was like someone on the commentary on a microphone saying my name and what a good ride I'd done. And all these people I knew were on the side of the road and they were all cheering my name too. And it was just such a good feeling. So that'd be my, um, that'd be my highlight. And in terms of future ambitions, it's just to kind of get more of that kind of thing in my life, you know, to, I want to, I want to go back and race the tour of ride again. I've done it a couple of times now and I always love it. And um, so this year, that'd be, that'd be high on my list of priorities. Well, Corinne, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us. And, uh, and obviously I can't wait to see how you go with the one in Mansfield coming up and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on the show and hopefully have a bit more time to discuss uh, more about, uh, especially women's in cycling and especially um, down there at Coburg and, uh, and everything else that's uh, is happening down there at Coburg. And uh, thanks so much for joining us and hopefully all goes well in, in Mansfield uh, in a couple of weeks. Thanks so much. It was great to talk to you. No worries. And that's uh, Corinne there joins us there from the Coburg Cycling Club. Of course, uh, if you want to get involved, there's one of the most beautiful venues, uh, especially their velodrome in particular, up there at Coburg North. And of course, we put all the details up on how to go but get involved uh, in cycling. There's more on the Smashport show right after this. Don't go away here on the Thursday edition.